to call to order the Committee on Finance meeting of April 26, 2016. Uh, and I'm Councilor Murphy, I'm chairing. Councilor LaVar is with us, Councilor Carney is with us, and Councilor Adams is rushing in from selling a big case something. <laughs> that makes us all here. So does that cover calling the roll? It does. It does cover calling the roll, so I did that for myself. Um, we have minutes of um, the meeting on April 21st, and I was not at that meeting, but the minutes are here for approval if you don't like to do we'll that. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll abstain because I wasn't at the meeting, so uh, I would, wouldn't be able to approve them. And uh, the only item on our agenda, agenda tonight is the audit of 2015, the audit was performed by Scanlon Associates. Mr. Scanlon is here in person to go over the audit with us, so we'll give the floor to Mr. Scanlon. Well, thanks, appreciate it. Um, I wish the weather was a little warmer out, but um, so you should have three reports uh, in front of you. Um, and before I started, I uh, brought Jeff Gendron here from my office, uh, so there's any hard questions we can ask him. Uh, but the main reason I brought him is I know there was a uh, concern about uh, the previous office of me being here for a longer time. So Jeff is going to transition to be in more of my role in the audit over the next three years. Uh, so we're going to transition that over this year. So my role is going to go down on the 16 audit and Jeff's role is going to New set of eyes. Yeah. Um, and then we have one of our newer staff, we uh, I mean, just passed the CPA exam. He's going to be more involved on the taxes end of it, so we're going to be switching it up a little. So um, Jeff's going to be more involved, so he's probably going to be more your point of contact. Um, I'll still be in the picture, being the partner, being signed, but um, Jeff will be more of a role. Um, so that ado, we'll uh, start. So the three reports, uh, third one, I'll probably concentrate on first. That is your financial statements. Um, and I would like to reiterate uh, the main purpose of an audit is to express an opinion on your financial statements if they're in accordance with GAAP, which is generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, the sole objective is not to find fraud uh, within your financials, but we have to consider fraud, and that's how we design our procedures, more of a risk assessment type uh, process. Uh, we assess materiality, your major transactions, uh, and then we sign the procedures from there. I always like to say that because there's always that expectation gap that an audit is synonymous with finding fraud. Um, that's not always the case. So uh, we turn to pages three and four. That is the auditor's uh, opinion. And we did uh, express an unmodified opinion, which is uh, the type of opinion you can get. Uh, so the bonding companies, that's where they will look at you, granting agencies, that's the first, basically this is what they're focusing on. Uh, do you get a clean opinion? Um, and that'll help you out in the bond market, which you did, so the city should be congratulated the for it. The big thick yeah. one. Huh? The big thick one. The big thick one? Yeah, the bond. Um, I just want to kind of walk through your financials real briefly. I don't want to get too, too involved if you have specific questions. I kind of just want to give you just a general idea of what finance, I know municipal finance can be very complex. Uh, when it comes to, uh, there's actually three sets of financials within the financials. Uh, we do have a business, just have a balance sheet and a statement of uh, change. But on pages 17 and 18, These are your entity-wide statements. Uh, they tend to affect uh, depreciation. Uh, it's full of pool. So here, you'll see on your balance sheet compensate absences, which uh, the city adopted in 2013 a compensate absence reserve. Um, so this is how funding this uh, balance. You see, you see compensate. There's a current portion and a non-current portion. Um, so the non-current portion is 2.3 million. Those are the promises. Uh, 65 Act. They were here. They leave termination or under all certain buybacks, and it's recognized on here. Could you just give some examples of non-current assets? Uh, non-current assets. Well, compensate absence piece go the long term, less than a year. I mean, over a year. So uh, someone is 55 and anticipate retirement at 60, they'd be classified as a long term. 
and not her. Um, you can see the other categories on there, which next to us, going to talk about was uh, net pension liability. This is the first year of that pension liability being on your balance sheet. That has always existed, um, and that's Gatsby 68. And what that typically is is you're on a funding schedule to fund your retirement system. I think 2036. 36. You're out to, so you're on a pay-as-you-go basis on there, but you have a target date to be fully funded. Um, and now that used to be note disclosed, now it's turned to your balance sheet because that is a liability that exists out there. So this is the first year and you can see that's 38 million. Um, then the other liability is OPEB, which I think we beat to death over the years, which is health insurance that you may achieve your employees that when they retire, you're going to pay a piece of their health insurance. The city did adopt an OPEB trust this year, took it to effectively put $100,000 into it. Um, I know it's not much, but at least you're uh, kind of addressing the issue. Uh, $100,000 compared to the $38 million. Yeah. I believe we did it last year too, didn't we? Should, yeah, 15 was your first year. 50. Yeah. Um, I think 16 you contributed. 16 we did um, 125, and in 17 we're going to do like 160, I think. So we're trying, we're gradually increasing it every year. Yeah, and really what I've been telling people and our, our clients is really OPEB is really long term thinking. Um, you know, you're not going to solve a $38 million liability over the That's no problem. Thank God it's not my cell phone. Somewhere there lies the truth. I'm not too sure your liability is 38 million. I'm not too. It's not zero either. So somewhere in there lies the truth. Um, what is a discount rate? I believe you're using another four percent. Um, and there's changes coming to the OPEP standard um, coming forward. Cap 375, which is going to take effect in the year 2018. Um, it's crossover points and everything with that. But really long-term thinking is how if you're going to put 100000 a year, obviously 100000 compared to your $38 million liability, I mean, the two are kind of on the same page. But you're really setting a target goal, um, say $10 million. Once you hit the $10 million mark, anyone that retires after that mark will be paid out of the trust. Um, so it's really adopting like a long-term plan on that. So there is a liability that exists out there. You are making a promise to your employees, um, just not in the current budget. Does that make sense? Yeah, and our plan is long term is as we fully fund, once we fully fund the retirement system in 2036, that we would take the contribution for the retirement system because then the city would be done with its obligation to fund the retirement system and then it would be funded from that point on by the employees. So we would take the appropriation for that and put that into OPEP. That's, I mean, we're not going to be at that point until 2036, hopefully. Um, and at that point, we take the contribution to retirement and put it into OPEB and hopefully make a lot of progress on OPEB at that point. So. And it's really, it's really long term thing. You are, make, you are making promises to your employees that you're going to pay a portion of their health insurance. I have to call it soft costs. It's not busy. I'm physically paying it out of right now, but we're going to make that benefit in the future. So it's really, really long term thinking. Um, and you can see some, I could be these, these two statements, I call them fancy world for accountants on you know, a really cool basis, uh, which you get out when you go down and look at your unrestricted piece of governmental activities, you'll see a deficit of 65 million. Mm -hmm. You don't want to see a deficit in that position. Um, that's usually a bad sign. And the two that trigger that is your two long-term liabilities, which is your OPEM obligation because you're on a pay-as-you-go basis on the premium and the net pension liability. Again, this is the first year it's being recognized on the balance sheet. But in year 2036, that liability is going to go down um, and that will eventually get that imposition back to zero. So that's kind of some things to take out of this statement. Uh, one of the things uh, we talk about, your net pension liability went down. Uh, that's because your projections on your investment income for your retirement system, you exceeded them. And that's what this deferred inflow on these financial savings are, this is 3.7 million. So you used to determine your ARC, um, which is the assessment bank, back to the member units. You used a discount rate of 7.75. Mm -hmm. um, I think you came in at 12.2. 12.89. 12.89. So you, 
you exceeded those expectations. So Gasby says you have to defer that revenue out the course over the expected life. Eleven point six. What's that? Yeah, think about that. I'm not sure. Yeah. So right. that's what this deferred inflow incorporates. Um, is there a question on that? That makes sense. Uh, on page 18, this is uh, the statement of activities change that goes along with that balance sheet that we heard we talked about. Um, you can see here, change in that position increased to 0.8 million. The bulk of that is your net pension liability going down uh, as a result of that change. Uh, you see under capital grants and contributions under public works, that 4.8 million. What that is, is chapter 90 um, grant that you be awarded to the city every year. And also there was a $3 million um, drainage for the three county fairgrounds that you received in June, um, but you didn't spend the money actually until fiscal year 16. So it's kind of a time issue on that. Um, and then on pages 19 and 20, these are more of your tradition, traditional balance sheets. Um, Again, as a government making your decisions off of, I think these are the most useful. These are the modified or cruel um, basis. You see the total depreciation on here. It's uh, basically cash in, cash out. Um, some of the main numbers on here is uh, the general fund uh, unassigned at 10.1 million. That number should represent is your free cash and your stabilization funds combined. Uh, stabilization funds for gap purposes are treated as general fund. For your budgeting purposes, you, you maintain them as a trust fund uh, under Mass General Law. But for here, uh, your free cash was certified at three million, uh, three point three three point four million, and your three stabilization funds uh, total at June 30, 2015, 5.2. You can see that comes up a little shy for 10.1 million. The difference being overlay the way the state calculates free cash, they take away your overlay. Uh, so we start with your undesignated fund balance. It's a conservative approach uh, to the free cash certification. That $10 million number, um, the significance of that, that's what bonding companies are looking at and how you relate to your overall expenditures. And you're roughly about 11% of your overall expenditures return turnover on page 20. Uh, that's the state of change here, 86 million expenditures, roughly about uh, 11%, which is a good ratio. Uh, what they put in categories is usually three to five percent. Uh, it's kind of such as average uh, six to ten percent. Um, you're in a good category. Anything above ten percent, you're doing really well. And the rate being a little bit higher. Um, you want to get into what's your bond rating? It's uh, we are double A. Yeah. yeah. You want to get to the triple A range. You really there's a, there's four factors that are really kind of fall into place, which you're gonna have to be up around fifteen percent to be in that range of getting upgraded. Um, I remember at the we had a meeting here on this year's the school committee and uh, and the city council said it's a mandatory meeting but that's required by charter. And down the mayor said we had a double A rating and I asked him something along the lines of how can we get the triple A or is it possible and he said he didn't think that were possible for a city of our size, which I don't, I, don't, I, I asked him to follow up on, but he never did. But it's, it's entirely possible well, for possible, us to reach yeah. AAA, right? Yeah, it's four yeah. broad categories. You know, I, on top of my head, I did. one of those management, consistently management, um, your reserves play a key role in that. Um, you've got to be at least 12 to 15% um, reserves of your budget. Um, and the other two factors, uh, liquidity is uh, the factor that plays in place. Uh, and overall having plans in place, like a capital plan, an operating plan, or a five-year trend, and having policies and procedures. I, I do know he, I remember he emailed um, our financial advisors that question, and I know I have the response to that, so I will remind the mayor that he needs to get back to the council on that. But I know, I do remember seeing a response from First Southwest on yeah. what it would take to get to a triple A. So. That takes a lot. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I think, too, the fact that our OPEV liability is so big, that had some yes. impact on it as well. So yeah, we're, we're not too far off from the reserves requirement. 
No, you have that, but then you have full pivot right. in your management, your policy, you know, um, you've come a long way in your reserves. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. I mean, five years ago, your reserves were way below the thresholds. Um, you see, the plan you have in place that you established over the past four or five years is working, especially with your three uh, stabilization funds. Um, and it's kind of evident on these financials, and that's what they're looking at. They're looking at $10 million and what ratio they have compared to your expenditures. Um, and also on page 20, you can see uh, the general fund increased 3.1 million. They are looking at that. They want to take a three to five year trend because it constantly increases. So again, if you're funding your stabilization, that's going to increase your overall fund balance. Uh, so that's what they're taking off of these statements. Okay, any specific questions about this? Uh, the six million, you see the non-major funds, the six million dollar increase in non-major funds. What non-major funds are, are your grants, your capital projects, and your trust funds. The reason for that six million increase was you had three million dollars coming out. We talked about before of that um, drained for three county fair. We came in on June, you didn't start spending it until um, fiscal year 16, so the lineup of expenses. Uh, change in capital projects, you borrow 2.6 million so for unspent bond plus about 1.9 and kind of expenditures. So the 6 million is related to kind of expenditures. And then the other thing I just want to point out about in the non-major funds, what, uh, we made a, a decision this year is we had a new stormwater fund this year. Uh, this is the first year, this is year 15. It is accounted for as these non-major funds here. Um, and you can see non-major funds are broken out on pages 71, 72, um, 73. And I always encourage, um, I know DOR likes these back schedules, they like looking at it, the line up when you get your free cash up on the look, what's broken down to the non-major, what you spend the free cash. Um, you can see on page 73, the stormwater fund, um, we have any fund down to $609,454. I know you adopted to account for it under Mass General Law. You've adopted an enterprise fund to account for it. Um, that doesn't ever see transition to business type activity for GAAP purposes. Uh, we felt that at this time, all the information is segregated out, like your debt is being properly segregated, compensated absences, the capital assets are all being segregated out on the city's end. <coughs> so for future determination, if you want to move it to a business and a, a business type funds, you can. Uh, the decision we made right now is to leave it as a non-major fund, uh, which is not business type funds, it's more useful. Because with business type, you're picking up capital assets, it's recognizing depreciation on your financial statements. We thought for the first five years, which you're limited in the amount of revenue you can raise as part of the ordinance. I think you might raise like two million, I believe, um, in annual revenues associated with that. Yeah, so, so, yes. so that played a lot of decision in making it a non-major fund then from a business type fund. Um, but again, that decision can be reassessed at the end of five years in whether to make it a business type fund for gap reporting. Doesn't change for budget purposes, you're still have it as an enterprise fund for Massachusetts. You must account it, get your free cash certified for it. But for gap purposes, it got classified as a non-major fund. Um, you felt it just didn't meet the definitions of business type at this point. Um, but everything's being segregated out, so that still needs to be made at a later date. Um, Could wanted, you yeah. explain the septic repair loan repayment? Yeah, that's through the Water Pollution Abatement Trust. You borrowed money from them for people who could borrow money from you to redo their septic systems over. Um, they pay it back, and then you pay back Water Pollution Abatement Trust. So who makes the decision of how much they pay monthly? The Water Department? The Board of Health, I believe. Yeah, it's a, we only have one outstanding loan um, from a really long time ago. Can you see that one? I just see the debt payments. I yeah. don't see any of the. We get um, one. We have one loan that's out there. It's not a program that's active that we're that we're doing anymore. But I do know that we still pay on 
but we still have debt service on one and someone does pay. And I actually think it's handled through the C D B G office. So it's a pretty standard program. We went to the late nineties, early two thousand. Um, there was two actually two rounds. One was through uh, EOCD from the state and then the second round was through WCAT. That pretty much said here's you know, the course of action to take uh, homeowners can come to the city, get a loan. It's pretty templated, it's twenty year agreement, whatever you borrow, put a template, pay it back. Um, then you take money and you pay back WPAT. So Or if not they go to sell their house and they automatically yep, will step filed. in yes. and take that money. Yep, right? Yep, yeah, Alina's filed on their house. Okay. Um by the, the activity limited. No, I think they're I think it is yeah. I did find um, the email from our financial advisors about the triple A um, and what it would take. Um, and what they said is, um, what, uh, let's see, the only way to address, let's see, she says, we were told the biggest factor holding the city back from a triple A rating is economic indicators. They mentioned at the time that regular formal reports to city council on budget to actuals would strengthen the city's management score but wouldn't necessarily pressure the rating upward. And I've started coming to you, giving you a quarterly report. So they say the only way to address demographic economic indices is to beef up reserves. And they sent us a, a list to look at some other comparable communities with AAA ratings. Um, they said, all, that's, all that said, the rating agency views the city's economy is very strong, management is strong, Finance is strong, very strong budgetary flexibility, and strong liquidity for proving rating stability. As S&P points out, if the city's economic metrics improve and management is able to mitigate the effects of fixed costs associated with pension and OPEB liabilities, <coughs> they could consi consider positive rating action. So that's it in a nutshell. Unfortunately, changing economic metrics is a tough thing to do. Tackling pension and OPEB is an area where there may be some opportunity. Building reserves would also be an area worth discussing. So, it's from our financial advisors. Yes. Who? Um, First Southwest is our. Uh, their name has changed. Do you remember what it is? But they are. They are the ones. Hilltop, it's changed to Hilltop Securities. Yeah, they were. They are the ones who work with us on bond issues, and they walk us through the whole process of doing the rating call, et cetera. What is their name? Well, they were First Southwest, and now they're Hilltop Securities. Yeah, okay. They're out of Boston. When they changed? They, they just just in the last recent. couple of months, they've changed, yeah. And do they, do, they have, do they have a list of communities that have, that have met that standard, the AAA standard? Uh, yes, I, I will have. The, I will talk to the mayor about getting this email off. To okay, you. Thank he you. did. He did follow up. Um, so I guess he just forgot to do the final okay, steps. Thank so. you. Yeah, now there are triple A. We, we have a few out there. It's a mixture of all. You know, they're addressing old family the reserves are twenty percent range. Um, and then they're in Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, so does everyone understand the classification we made on the stormwater fund? I just want to make sure no one thought we would be looking at the business type funds and say, oh, it's not in here. Where is it? Uh, it's in the major funds. Um, again, we can probably get more useful information being on the modified accrual than from a full accrual basis when you're looking at them. Uh, again, everything's segregated out so that decision can be made at a later date. Uh, the kind of the next statement I I'd like to talk about it on page 23, I think it's kind of vital uh, as far as uh, governance of, of a city or town, uh, which would be yourselves. And this is the budget versus action. It's kind of like the key to everything when it comes to uh, management. Again, some of the points of view I know that we discussed about uh, was breaking out that original budget in the column. I'm sorry, what page is it? Uh, 23. 23, thank you. Oh, you said 22, okay. Oh, I did? Yeah. yeah. So 20. I must have been thinking about 22. <laughs> That's what's nice when you have it up on the screen and you can have the cursor and have an arrow on what you're talking. Makes it easier. I'll let you have to do that next year. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> on the screen. Yeah. Um, it, it, we brought, we just, you can see the schedule a little bit different from last year. We used to lump the original budget with the prior year of conferences in the one, so we kind of broke that out. Um, 
be a little bit more user friendly. Um, first column is the amount carried forward from the prior year, uh, which is reserved for encumbrances. The original budget is the original budget you voted at council going into the fiscal year, and then the final budget is that they're all council transfers um, and all that good stuff. And you can see down below how you're funding the budget is you're using free cash and other reserves. Three three million oh thirty two five sixty nine, and you can see prior year encumbrances, which is a form of fund house to fund the budget. So you can see the six million four thirty seven four ninety budget deficit you have, and how you're funding it. Um, I call them all the way out is how you compare to your budget uh, after you come in, and you're generating roughly three point three of free cash within your budget. So you're using three million to fund your budget, but you're also generating three million which is something the bond companies will look at how you're generating it. If you were to take, let's say, $2 million a year to fund of your free cash, to fund operations, and you don't generate it back, you'll eventually see your fund balance going down, 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 down. Um, so what you're seeing here, what you take out of it, is you're using $3 million of fund balance, but you're also generating it. And you have a nice blend of how you're generating free cash. You see from your revenues, you're generating about $1.5 million um, and you can see it's not in any one particular category. Uh, you can see excise uh, tax is 256,000. You're over, over, collecting over what you're budgeting. Uh, hotel room occupancy and meals tax, 176,000. Uh, charges for services, that is parking and ambulance um, are the components of that category. You can see that's 311,000. So you have a nice, you're very conservative on your uh, revenues. You can see you're generating it. Um, again, I, I think that's from sound financial policies you have in place. You, you wouldn't want to load it up in one category. Because um, really, hotel, motel tax, and meals tax, and motor vehicle are really market dependent. They're based on consumption of one, uh, the markets do, and, and motor vehicles. So, Again, you're, you're very conservative on that. And then also on a on turn back uh, uh, on spent appropriations, you can turn back about 1.7 million. And again, you don't have a high number, you don't have other employee benefits closing out $2 million. You see, it's kind of a nice blend what you're having. I did go through, Tom, and just kind of find, and on the uh, revenue side, 360,000 of that surplus was from tax title. Yep. Um, which we were very active um, last year, as, as Chris can attest to. And then, as you pointed out, some of the more in, um, you know, uh, economic dependent indicators like the motor vehicle, people buying new cars, motel, hotel meals, um, those and permits with building, um, those all brought in, like motor vehicle brought in over 200,000 more. So the ones that came in over budget are the ones that we very much try to budget conservatively because they are so dependent on people's consumer powers, whether they decide they want to buy a new car or not. So we try to be very <coughs> conservative in budgeting those. And then on the expense side, where we generated quite a bit of the excess, um, there were a lot of vacancies in the police department in 2015, so a lot of it was generated in the PD. That was almost 300, over 300,000 that the PD turned back. And then, um, Throughout the uh, some other departments, some vacancies in fire and in the DPW generated quite a bit of um, additional turn back and salaries. And when you have vacant positions, you also get turn back and employee benefits because then there's fewer people on health insurance and there's fewer people that we're paying um, Medicare on. So that's generally where the surpluses on the expense side came is through vacancies. So, for the police department, would that fall under the public safety line, or is it okay? So, so they so that, it is broken down that yeah, way. Yeah, that four hundred forty-eight thousand roughly would say police three sixty-three. Yeah, the police alone was like three twenty-five. Okay, like that. Uh, and then I think it's always important to know like where your free cash has come from, how you're generating it, specifically how you use it. You know, if you're using free cash, consider a one-time event. So, if you're using in a lot of communities back in the 2000s, they, they were taking a million dollars a year and reducing the tax rate with it. So if you're reducing the tax rate and you have no fall off in your budget, that's for operations. You're really utilizing fund balance. You have no method of regenerating that. Um, that's how you can get in trouble. You 
reserves start going down. So um, I believe management and yourselves have a very good understanding of how free cash works. And is, um, this is kind of evident, this statement, when you look at it, you don't see a lot of, you don't want to see brackets in these columns out here. You don't want to see a lot of negatives. You don't want to see using reserves of $5 million and then we a million. Um, and that's, what, that's kind of how bonding companies are looking at you. And I think this statement, go back over three years, um, very comparable. That's a, I, there was one year, was it 08 or 09 or something, we had negative free cash. Yeah, yeah. It's a sort of, we're in a really good position now compared to that. Yeah, if you look at that, you see a lot of negatives in, in that. Year. At that time frame. Yeah, it was yeah. this borderline revenue deficit for raising. Uh, yeah, we had a revenue deficit because the state decided mid year to change. Correct. And we budgeted on it and they changed it, so we got caught. And then, thank you, they, they they didn't supply the money they said they were, and then they put us in revenue deficit because we didn't have the money they said we did. So. And, we, and we've also been tracking our use of free cash, and we really, you know, several years ago, we were, we were taking out of free cash veterans benefits, mm -hmm. we were taking fire overtime, we were taking legal, and there was four of them um, that we were constantly hitting free cash for, and as the situation has improved. We're budgeting more accurately. We haven't come to free. We haven't gone to free cash for veterans benefits, fire overtime. Um, we haven't for a really long time. had that much fire overtime at all. They seem to have. We filled the vacancies. We've been doing pretty good in that department. Yeah, and we budgeted accurately, and mm -hmm. and and you know instead of pretending we weren't going to spend it, now we're like, yeah. no, we know. Oh, snow and ice was the other one, yeah. and that one we, we did really well last year. Mm -hmm. Well, we did really well this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, not in 15, but yeah. in 16. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, we're, we're really not using free cash very much for operating anymore, uh, which is a great position. No, we, we, hit the, we hit the funds and then maybe pay the street or some one time stuff. Yeah. But no. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not financial policies, man. That's evident off that. It's budget versus actual, as you can see. I mean, uh, what everyone's looking at, from the outside looking at, that's one of the key statements looking at that budget for a um, And this is the last point I want to make is on page 75. Um, kind of a, a schedule of your outstanding revenue. Your, your number one resource or revenue is obviously your property taxes. Uh, now, I was like, this is a good. Uh, supplementary schedule to point out is uh, your collection rate. Your collection rate is 96.997%. Um, this schedule really shows that your collector is doing a good job. Um, you can see the furthest column out is your uncollected per detail list, sub ledger action actual detail list. Um, you can see the uncollected tax is the second column, the second to last column. That's what is represented on your financial statements. Um, you can see this minor variances in the dollar um, on real estate. And you can see you only have two years outstanding, outstanding 15 and 14, which is great. Um, like I said, your collection rate is 97%. You're not just taking it and moving in the tax that you're putting a lien on it, you're actually collecting it. Um, and again, that's your number one revenue source. You just want to have receipts in place to protect that uh, if you do. Uh, and, and well, as we mentioned earlier, so much of it has been cleaned up recently, and that, that's great. Yeah, you know, and then the other thing is that I've been a manager for is uh, you have some older personal property we want you to have to take care of. Um, you can see under prior years personal property, you got 442000 outstanding. The way to do that is through the abatement process, which is hitting the overlay, which if you overtrod the overlay, you have to raise it under recap. Um, because unlike, unlike real property, that stuff's gone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah I mean, or it may never have been there in the first place. You yeah. never really know. What you did in those years, you used that as a estimate setting your budget, and yeah, that's how you balance your budget on it. Uh, so you do have to take care of it at some point. A lot of the properties we went through are not existing businesses anymore, mm -hmm. um, or some other properties that are, are gone, they're out of business. So it, it, it truly is uncollectible, but you still have to go through the abatement process. I know with this new municipal relief act that's out there, and I'm not too sure if it got passed yet. I know it's in the process. Is Establishing a one overlay account um, will kind of help the city of Northampton because you have one overlay and you have enough, roughly about a million dollars in there right now. So if you pick these older personal properties, 400, there's a 
move up from there. Where right now, under Mass General Law, you have to count for your overlay by separate year. So if you hit the overlay for 2010, it's going to overdraw that, and you'd have to raise it in your next recap. Mm -hmm. So that will have an impact on your recap for 17. So hopefully that means to leave that goes through. That's one of the things. If it does go through and you do one overlay account, I would suggest going back and cleaning these up. Um, mm -hmm. Abate this, abate it, get rid of it, and then yep. make one account. Yep. You know what I mean by that right now? It's like all in vision. Yeah. Combined, it's a million, so it's enough there in total to do it. But if you want to do it by levy, you, you, yeah. you and, 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 you know, well taken on the personal property because a lot of that is ghost stuff that's never going to be collectible. No. And, yeah. it, and it's less back up, but we still still going to go through the process and research each property at the, the departmental level, the assessors, and the mm -hmm. collector level. Mm -hmm. That's kind of it on the financial end. Unless you have specific questions about it. Um, Any, anybody got anything particular? Yeah, I'm going to read it. Yeah, if you're reading later, I'd want to call my office. You know, mm -hmm. want to sell my office. I don't hesitate to call again. Okay, so unfortunately, I know if you look through the MDNA, there's a lot of changes compared to last year. Um, you know, and on page eight, if the restricted change pretty considerably um, for fund balance. Again, a bulk of that, that $3 million bigger grant, the capital project is a bulk of that. So you see something and say, wow, this capital grant's decreased by $8 million. You know why? Uh, don't hesitate to call. Um, and can then, I, uh, can I just ask yeah. you, on page 41, because I've been reading that about the custodial credit worth. Yeah. What is that all about? Uh -huh. You have your monies uh, certain banking institutions and your investments with certain investment accounts. Um, and Say they're, like for the city I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, they're holding your investments, so if they go under, there's some kind of custodial risk there. So if you have, you have a $10 million CD with Bank of America, Bank of America goes under. Are you you're insured up to two hundred fifty thousand now? But the difference be technically lose out on, um, and that's what these notes are describing. What so the city that. could lose out. Yeah, that's a, we have to assess the risk on that. We have to disclose your risk on where you're invested in. But again, we have a whole policy we're reviewing where your money's invested. Uh, believe you review the ratings there, what they call it the green, the red, the yellow. Yeah, the bear bank. Yeah. So it's not like you're in the bank of uh, Tom Scanlon that you know that probably have some risk there. Um, that that's the whole disclosure on that. So what's next, federal? Uh you can do the federal one, just touch base on that exactly what it is. Uh, the city received uh, roughly about 3.3 million in federal expenditures. Uh, there's a thing called a single audit out there that if you spend over half a million dollars, you have to have an audit. On the, the city has to have an audit, and part of that is called a single audit, which is A133, which the whole matrix you go through, and you have to basically test 50% of the federal expenditures of the city. Um, that means that there's a compliance document put out by that U.S. Department uh, says this grant can only use for these purposes, and you go through and you test those compliances. Um, and the grants that met the criteria are the school SPED grants in Title I, and also community development. Uh, those are the three grants we tested. We only had one uh, compliance issue, and that's with the Smith Folk School SPED and Title I grants, uh, which was very minor. It was on, uh, Allocation uh, timesheets uh, outlined on page 15. 15. I had to do this on when I was on the school side. Whenever an employee works under a federal grant, each week you have to get a signed timesheet from them that swears to how much work, how many hours they spent working on that grant. And up at Smith, there had been a number of um, staffing changes up there, and so they kind of forgot to do it one year. They're, they did it, they're doing it now, and, and 
they, they had done it before, they just kind of dropped the ball on this one year. Um, just a reassurance that the employees signing off that they are working on a federal program, um, so we're auditing it, gives us reassurance that the employees acknowledging they're working on a federal program and being paid federal dollars. Um, and they're meeting the compliance under that grant. <coughs> so that's the only time that she would have with the federal grants. Um, I actually think this document is the most interesting for council because we spend a lot of time talking about the general fund and the enterprise funds, mm -hmm. and you you know you get a detailed budget of where all that money's going, etc. But the federal grants, this is really interesting to look at because it covers the grants the police department's getting, the fire department, the various schools, CDBG, planning. Um, it really, de it's actually, I use this a lot because it's really a great little thing that just kind of says, this is all the resources that the departments are using in addition to their general mm -hmm. fund budgets. Yeah. They have these monies, so. Yeah, and these are just federal grants. Right. That's why we put those back schedules in on the, on the non-major funds out back that kind of some of the public safety grants, school grants. You can really go there and see um, exactly what departments have grants. Mm -hmm. And especially so many of them are school related <coughs> and we don't really have much to do with their budget at all. So right. this is really the only time we ever see how much of their funding comes from right. other sources. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting to see how much federal funds actually, yeah. Uh, and then kind of the final document, I know probably the most focal uh, point is... Uh, it's getting really skinny, too. Yeah, it is. As we go through and do our audit procedures, uh, certain areas that we identify uh, that are control deficiencies, they kind of put them in three buckets, uh, material weakness, significant deficiency, and other matters. The first two kind of speak in themselves, uh, the material weakness, for instance, if you weren't balancing your cash or the expenditures or you're writing checks outside the warrant process. Uh, those would be bad things, significant deficiencies and material weaknesses. Um, all the items in the management letter are other matters. Uh, they're really just to strengthen uh, your operating efficiency. Uh, so on page four is uh, informational item. Uh, we just talked about the federal funds. There's a new OMB circular out there that totally changes the single audit format. It raises the threshold to 750,000. Um, we really put there's um, uh, administrative requirements now. Uh, all your policies should have to be documented uh, when it comes to procurement and uh, other matters. I know specifically uh, the school department has addressed that at uh, Basketball's put uh, various conferences out there. Um, I know there's templates out there, so every department's fully aware of it. Um, some of the things I, from uh, the audit profession side, is we feel there's gonna be more compliance findings in your uh, A133 report, like well, since you only had one this year, and it's with those uh, uh, personal time sheets. Those are now gone in new OMB system, uh, but there's other requirements like documenting your inventory uh, and purchased under uh, federal grants. So we really encourage Again, when we're doing our field work, we communicate all this to all the area departments that receive federal funding. And again, when they apply for their new federal grants, it was basically right up there. There is new OMB circulars. Uh, so basically in there, to make, make sure informative when there is a finding for next year, you can say, yeah, if there was a new circular out there, I'm going to tell you. Uh, so I, I know there's swooping changes for that. Uh, then uh, our current year, um, uh, our inventory, so we don't spend a little time in the departments. Uh, we talk about inventory, but things not account for under your capital assets. If your vehicle would be account for under your capital assets. Uh, these are more if you're buying a chance uh, movable items. Um, again, a lot of the departments were taking an inventory every two years, but they weren't made perpetual. Like they bought something that was supposed to be on there. They were just calling, oh, this is what we have, because that was you're supposed to have. Again, Department of Public Works is probably the main department, the police, the fire department, the larger department, the school. Uh, I think it's more important for protecting your assets uh, more than an accounting standard. So, I mean, a lot of our clients have been getting out there doing that for the past year, looking at their inventory. So, you know, what are the items that are you replacing every year? You know, are you buying lawnmowers every year? Things that are not on your capital assets. I know it's a tedious 
thing. Um, but again, it's, you're, you're at that level of you're capitalizing things at twenty-five thousand items, maybe costing you five or two thousand. Um, your main department should be keeping some sort of inventory and protecting what's supposed to be there. Um, just looking at that tax withholding. Yep. Okay. I cannot believe that. Apparently, it's saying here during our audit, we reviewed the tax withholding procedures. Our trustee noted that one payment to the Internal Revenue Service was 13 days late. As a result of this late payment, the city was assessed and paid a penalty of $14,495. Yeah. For 13 days being late. Yeah, it was a large payment. <laughs> yeah, I think I think what's what was the total like three or something thousand. Two eighty nine. Two eighty nine. Yeah. Later. Two thousand. Yeah. I actually asked Chris to come and talk to you about that and the procedures that she's put in place. Do you want sure. to? Sure. She might want to see that Chris around. Well, see you with the can't see you over there. Um. Here I am. <laughs> So at the time, there, there was um, a payment that um, was set up. We all probably know we have our payroll through Farm Savings Bank. So part of the process was a two-step process. You would set up your payment and the dollar amount and the quarter, and then there was a second part of it. So second part of it is actually an approval piece, those two steps. In the computer. In, in, and it's all done on through their website. So it's a two-step process. So the where the error happened is the second part didn't happen on the approval side of it. It was set up, it was anticipated that it went when it actually didn't go. Hmm. Um, so it was discovered um, when we're doing payroll for the next bi-weekly payroll, and we logged back in and saw that there was still a, a pending transaction. It's like, oh, this is not good. So what we did immediately, we changed the process. Um, all transactions, electronic, all funds transferred, all payments such as the IRS um, tax withholding, um, Massachusetts withholdings, um, it gets looked at by both, um, both personnel, so nothing is missed. And it's been working really well. Okay. Right. So I mean, that's a tremendous amount yeah, it's, of money. It, 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 it's five. It's five percent. Right. Really late. It's a five it's percent. Still, it's money. still. Oh no! I mean, yeah. A lot of money. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It oh. is. That's why. It's, so I think if you're late, it's five percent of what you owe, and then it's calculated the interest of the thirteen days. So that's what's getting the amount up there. Right. And it, it, if the tax amount that was owed was a lower amount, obviously the the penalty would be lower. But unfortunately, that happened to be a really heavy payroll day on that particular um, payroll warrant. It was a lot of payments, so. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah. Um, so we've you know, made corrections in the process to make sure that it doesn't ensure that it will not happen again. It hasn't happened again. Um, and it, it, most recently, too, the bank that the, has updated their website, so it's no longer a two-step process. So it, it has helped you know, Thank with you. not having that misstep. Is from that. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the third one, uh, we may notice in a lot of our communities that the surety bonds for the children's collectors have been a little bit low. Um, that's because through the years, every year you're increasing uh, two and a half percent of your property taxes. Um, there's been a lot of communities in this category, so when your bonds come up for renewal, which is what we're saying, increase them and get them up within the guidelines. Um, we're noticing that uh, a lot of our communities have been in the same bottom amount for the past 10 years. Over 10 years, if your budget grows at two and a half percent, just in the amount of raising taxes up to your levy. Uh, they can put you over to the next threshold, and that's what happened uh, in Northampton's case. So I, I believe. Yeah, well, when we renew bonds for 2017, we'll go to the higher lo levels. Uh, and then the prior comments, just uh, update on Gatsby 68. You can see the updated in the financials. Uh, mm -hmm. 
you need vendor file, you put procedure in place, you contact all your vendors, uh, you do all 1099s, you sample uh, with the 2025 phone, uh, so you did it and found no exceptions in 2025. So you did start reviewing your vendor file. Um, departmental receipt procedures, again, we encourage getting out there and really looking at your departments because your larger department internally, which is your treasurer, once they get into your treasury, you have put sound procedures in place to account for the balances. Um, but the outlier departments, uh, when a transaction happens between a resident and that department, um, you do have policies in place. Uh, kind of want to ensure that the procedures are being followed. Uh, I call your secondary departments. Uh, how they start getting cash and checks on the turnover? Uh, they come over on a timely basis. Again, you do have a policy there, uh, but any given time they can break down, so I encourage getting out reviewing um, procedures with your department to call your outlier departments, uh, really reviewing that, making sure your receipts uh, and pharmacies are being accounted for properly. And these are departments that would have probably lots of fairly small transactions. I think you said recreation was one of them. Council on Aging. Um, Council on Aging. Um, these are kinds of lots of, you know, transactions between a resident and a, a, and a department. Um, this is not like taxes or anything. Uh, kind of the fourth one, uh, review older, I'll say that's where I talked about those personal property taxes and that was just a little while ago. It's going to be the current city to review those to the fatal. Uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I don't know if you have specific questions about anything. Anyone have any other questions for Mr. Stanley? This point? We can get in touch if we spend some time with this. Yeah, with no, the, yeah, with the documents, we can get in touch with you. Yeah, and I, and I think next year, uh, Jeff had a great idea. Um, he would tell me what he wanted to do was uh, maybe meet with uh, the finance like in August, first part of August, whenever your meeting is. And kind of discuss any concerns you have along with mm -hmm. the city. Uh, you know, oh, in for, anticipation of anything yeah, that because, might want to Yeah, yeah. Um, because we're picking our outside departments off of analytical, um, you know, we're looking for fluctuations, but there may, may be some concerns that you may have as mm -hmm. government saying she's not concerned over these type of transactions. So uh, we'll go in uh, and look at that. Uh, I mean, I thought that was good. Could we possibly do a screen presentation on that? It's very difficult. I mean, if we're being videoed here, people don't, they can't see this. And if they put it up on the screen, they're going to actually see the figures. Yeah, no, we can do that. Definitely. So when you talk about coming in August, that's before you would start the 2016. Yeah, that'd be before we started the field work, and you know we're doing it's part of our. You know, we right now we first part of August we do uh, like a risk assessment procedures like within the office. Okay, how are we going to approach this audit? Where some high risk areas? May do some preliminary analytical. There are some things that we went through this year's audit where we said okay. We're going to look at this next year because we don't like this ratio here, but we're going to set a benchmark now. So when we come back in the August, we can, you know, account for the difference. Uh, so when Jeff and said, you know, maybe meeting with uh, council and discussing, you know, what risk concerns you have, what transactions, you know, maybe, and maybe in the stormwater files, you see and look at, you know, the billing on You know, it would be helpful if you met with us after you determine from your analytical, uh, yeah, uh, yeah analytical. your analyticals, which ones are of interest to you. Yeah. Um, so I don't know when you when you be able to end of August. Or probably September. Yeah, so July and August are slow months for us, but we're all we're all back on the schedule in September. Yeah. So I think we usually come in we come in for a couple of days in August to gather some information mm -hmm. on the financials. Yeah. So you could catch up with us because we'd be interested in what trends you're seeing. Yeah. Because um, the, you know. Unless it's something really obvious, we don't always, you know, we're not we're not going to know on a daily basis what's changing within departments. No, yeah, but maybe it might just be a concern for yourself. You may have a certain transaction. You know, I always had a concern about this. Uh, you know, can you look at that? Uh, yeah, because we don't want to have you come in and say, "Gee, we haven't noticed anything." You know, come in with your analyticals and say, "Hey, here's what here's what we're choosing to review more carefully this year based on this and this and that." Yeah. And then if we go, but I want you to come in and have us say, you know, we don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> and we went solely basis. Yeah, kind of, nice to see you, but 
Yeah. You know, we don't have anything on our list. Not because they have their September meeting. Well, I think what might also be useful is at least um, at once in every few years is for you uh, as auditors to kind of explain to council what you do when you do the audit because what you see here is a really small piece of what they do. I mean, when they're here, uh, you know, I'm getting somebody coming into my office, you know, at least once a day, and I have to uh, show them how I calculated the enterprise ind fund indirects. So I have to show the methodology. Uh, they're over at HR pulling, um, you know, personnel files to look at to make sure that people are being paid the correct rate. Uh, I think it would be interesting for council to hear the kinds of testing that you're yeah. doing when you're here um, because it's a lot more involved than what you see and you know this is just the end result um, but and I know you're not you know this is not a, a audit for fraud but the kind of, of level of detail that auditors are going into is they are basically looking to make sure that things things are matching up and there isn't anything you know that shouldn't be going on. So Sounds good. I think welcome any time to come in and look at our work papers and you know be part of our team, part of the field work. <laughs> but it would I think it would just be helpful for yeah. them to know what you you know they, they pull stuff to make sure that um, certain you know you, d you test for procurement. Do we follow the procurement laws? I mean just kind of an overview of the kind of stuff um, that goes on for the on for the staff, what we experience when they come So any other questions? On, and again, we can take a look at the books if you have any questions come up after you read over the books. We can get the answers from there. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. Is there a plan to present to the full city council? What have we done in the past? The audits are up on the website. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't always do that. Sometimes we do, but, but we haven't lately. Just. I don't think we've done it lately, I don't just think because we've done it there's exactly nothing. We did it last year. Yeah, I, we did, we did it back when we had some sort of heftier management letters. We did it with council, but we've got it down the management letter down pretty pretty skinny. So there's not really anything substantially interesting in there, other than you know make sure the smaller departments use number receipt books, and we're not talking about a lot of money with them anyway. You know, and we had we had some issues with fire years ago. So, but those that was a big department. These are little departments, so. I mean, I don't, do you see a compelling reason to have this presentation done to the full council? Well, I, I just wanted to point out that I think we did used to have it yearly. Um, because I remember some of the previous management letters and, and, I, I, and when they were presenting, I don't think it was presented to the full council because of the content of the management letter. I think several years ago, or maybe, or maybe even maybe even last year, they were presented to the full council, and I, I don't know and if it's necessary. In a abbreviated manner, I mean, it mm -hmm. wasn't an hour-long presentation like we had tonight. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we certainly can um, make the audit documents available to the rest of the councilors and see if they feel like there's a compelling reason. You know, I hate to waste the council's time on something that they don't think is necessary. So, there are there audit materials for all of the councilors. Yes. We we can get those. Oh yeah. Then what I, I think what might make sense is give everybody an audit book, look, and ask them to look at it and see if they think it's compelling yeah, to it's, have you come in. I think it's been past practice. We usually met at the finance, um, mm -hmm. and then I think the year on the ground. I think I, I want to say two years ago, because there's there's fairly number of new councilors. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I and think. And you came and did a so yeah. when the Gatsby <laughs> update happened. You came and talked to us about yeah the impact of. Needs to be wise to come to the full council. Well, also our finance committee is part of the whole council, so you may have presented at a finance committee meeting that was on a, yeah, on a regular council right. night. Yeah. We have a quorum of council here tonight because Councilor Goodwell is here. So you've got mm -hmm. you know you get five out of five out of nine have have seen this already, and that would be my suggestion. Give everybody an audit book, let them look through there, and if there's if they want a presentation, take the time for it. We'll you'll have you come in, and yeah, okay. if it if nothing in there gets piques their interest, then we'll save you the trip. I look too far away. I, I, I did already send the audit books around okay. to the councils, okay. councilors, so I will ask them tomorrow if they would like to have have a presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And most of them, the ones that I sent them to, would not would prefer to get an electronic copy. 
So yeah, and if they're interested, we'll have you come mm -hmm. in, and if they they're comfortable, then we'll save you the time. And um, I know my my winter's been a little mixed up because I ruptured my Achilles in January. <laughs> That surgery, I think. Yeah. Don't ever well, hopefully, it was don't ever do it. Yeah, hopefully, it was skiing and not shoveling. I was playing an over 40 adult league, and I was walking off the field in soccer, and I heard a pop and a pain, and I went down the curve. The only good thing about it was my wife had said to me about two weeks ago, you know, you do a lot around here, I guess. You know, she had to take go to the trash. It's my good thing that's come out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through that at home now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm the healthy one. <laughs> I'm seeing the flip side of that. Right. Is, there, <laughs> is there anything else to uh, come nope. before us? Because it's the last thing on the, uh, I don't know of any new business, right? No new business, so. Move to adjourn. Second. Yes. Someone? Second. Second. Someone favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Thank you.